Hello everyone. And welcome to my shop. All right, everyone, welcome back to my shop. And as you can probably surmise, we're back on this GMC again. And we're going to be back doing some more work underneath here. So, stay tuned, and we'll show you. All right, folks. In, uh, in the uh, previous series where I installed these uh, knee action shocks, uh, you know, I, I mentioned that I was going to put a spring from this line down to this bracket. Well, what I did is I just uh, moved the bracket that was already on this brake line. Now, this brake line fits a uh, 79 and up. Uh, I don't know the year range. I just know 79. Uh, C10 or S10 brake. Uh, front uh, caliper so I just moved the bracket and secured it to the inner uh, fender and we got plenty of slack here up and down so no problem I think that's better than the spring anyway so that ties up that one all right <clears throat> Today we're going to mess around with the uh, front springs. <clears throat> when I first got this truck, uh, it only had two springs. It had the top spring and the second spring, and, uh, and that's it. None of the others were there, and the bump stop here was resting against the frame. So those <laughs> shocks, those crazy uh, uh, tube shocks that came on here were really not doing anything at all unless uh, the axle dropped because uh, generally the axle was riding up against the frame. So what I did, I did some uh, horse trading, and I got a used set of a uh, full set of leafs for the front and the back that came off a 49 Chevy truck. And uh, what I did is I just took five of them and replaced the two wore out, uh, highly wore out springs. And uh, I put just five on here because I was wanting to maintain my front lower than rear aspect ratio well with only a quarter inch clearance here that's not really enough so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the other three on and see how uh, how much uh, uh, clearance it'll give me here on the bump, uh, bump stop and also see if it what it does to my front to rear uh, uh, ratio and if uh, it makes the front higher I may have to do something with the rear, but uh, first we'll see that because in this state, you know, quarter inch really isn't much at all for, you know, bumps or anything. We got a lot of bumps around here, so. All right, presently I've got the uh, <clears throat> jack stand, a set of jack stands underneath the axle. So what I'm going to do is I'll put in another set of jack stands that'll go under, uh, that's underneath the frame. So I'm going to get this axle off the, uh, the front, I'm going to get the axle off the front, uh, off the uh, jack stand so I can lower it down and that way I can manipulate the uh, axle up and down. Now look how much clearance I got between the bump stop and the frame. <laughs> but it ain't going to stay like that. So anyway, uh, and just for a point of reference, I'm going to uh, show a picture or two of uh, of the, uh, this, the the two only the two only springs that uh, that came on the truck when I got it. The jack wouldn't even slide underneath that uh, axle. So here we go. All 
Okay, here's the other three uh, leaves that go on the front there. I know I should sand them and paint them, but again, like I was pointing out earlier, this is not a permanent fix. So I just want to get it together now to see how it goes. And because uh, uh, if I keep the truck, I really want to go to a different type of front end uh, and instead of keeping this straight axle. So, but anyway, for now, I know they look pretty rough, but they're good. They'll, they'll work. They're just, you know, wore out, but, <laughs> but they got to be better than just five. Okay, I can't, it's so far back in the fender, I can't tell if it's showing, but we'll see. Just got to do it the manual way. Okay, we're just going to lower it down just enough to slide them springs in. Grease fit now. There's a nut on the other side there, and it's not going to come off till that grease fit comes off. Broke it off so the nut will come off and washer, lock washer. All right. All right. Yeah, I'll get back before I was so rudely interrupted. See, see, he threads in there. And then there's a nut that holds it on there too. He looks like he's worn it. See now he's loose. Now we're gonna get the front one. 
what I want to do is put the uh, nut and lock washer. And I brought, busted, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but I busted my grease zerk. I should have took him off first. I don't know that to do on the, the other side. So anyway. Now here on the... Uh, on the front clamp, this center bolt right there, see if I can find a place to hang this light. Alright, get a little closer. This, this center bolt right here, there's a nut on the other side. I think I can get, the, get it in there. And it spreads these two brackets and uh, allows the pin, the two pins just to come out. So, we'll get to that. Some good light going on here. There we go. Let's try to get it all situated. Sometimes you just got to get the right bars. Okay. All right. All right. What I'm gonna do now is remove the center pin here. That's that's keeping these all together. All right. It's a half inch. Now. It's kind of, it's custom cut, so it will not work when I put these new other springs on there. pin out all right it's actually a special pin it's got this you just can't use a standard nut and bolt and a long time ago I ordered a bunch I ordered four because uh well I just didn't know what I was going to get into and as you can see it's a little bit bigger matter of fact that's custom made this one here huh so let me make sure this will fit. It should. That's exactly what it's for. Yep, it'll fit. All right. Now that's the bottom one. So we have him, him, and him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six, seven. All right, there's all eight of them. All right. Trying to keep all of this within reach of the camera. Okay. Now, there are these clamps here at the ends. There should have been two more here, and they are they were cut off by who knows. So what I'll do is I found a place online that will uh, provide them, and uh, so that's what I'll do. I'll get some new ones. Now a lot of people they'll put a felt in between these to keep them from squeaking. Okay, felt or there or some of them even had some kind of plastic. Uh, uh, Buttons, I believe is what they call them. But uh, as you can see, there's none here. Uh, this truck's got so many 
squeaks anyway. I'm not overly concerned with it. So we're going to run this bolt up, well this nut, up on the bolt. And I'll squeeze them together. Okay. Two clicks of the wrist. Okay. Now, uh, now we've got all eight leaves. This is the, this is what it comes in the stock form, the way it should be. Again, I got to get two clamps to fit here and here, but I'll order them. Uh, it's not uh, it's not that important at this point. Now you see how tall this is. Uh, actually, let me show you. It's going to have to be cut off because the bump stop sits there, and the bump stop looks like it goes in about three quarters of an inch, maybe. So, which is basically the size of the nut. So I'll have to cut off this screw now so this bump stop can go on, okay? This shim right here, this sets your caster or camber. I'm going to have to set it, okay? The little dot there. I got to make sure yeah, he will fit. Okay, good deal. Now, I remember how it came off before, and I'm going to double check at my manual. That don't didn't almost seem right. But this uh, sets your front, you know, part of your front end alignment, and it does fit through that, and then what's left goes in, into a little notch that's actually in the axle. But anyway, I need to cut that bolt off. All right, it's cut off, so now you can see how that fits down on there like that, okay? That's your bump stop. All right. Good deal. Okay, I did some research off camera, and it is caster that, uh, that this wedge sets right here that goes between the spring and the axle. And you want caster to be back, actually tilting. The, uh, if the kingpin, if you got the kingpin at a 90 degree angle like this, you want caster to kick it back towards the rear like that. That helps center the wheel, all right? And that's what this wedge does. Now, it's funny. You put the big end towards the rear, and you'll think, well, that seems backwards, but actually it's not. If you think about it, just put some deep thought into it, you'll see how that's the way it should be. So anyway, this is ready to go back on now. Okay, this will be a lot of work if it don't do what I want. <laughs> okay, spin like that. I need to get my wedgie. My wedge and my bump stop. Okay, Here the wedge will go first, and there's a little notch on it, okay. You got several moving parts you got to line up. But once you do, it's not too bad. Okay, so we, I guess we'll do the front first. All right. Yeah.
show you this pin I'm going to replace the pin on this side because this pin is in bad shape very bad shape let's see we can show it okay see how it's wore there and we'll compare it to what a new pin looks like see the difference so that pin's half, halfway wore through. So let's see. University. Guess what I forgot? The bump stop. situated what do with the nut I'm sure I run it out over back over okay we we'll don't use It's somewhere and not where it belongs. Okay, he started. Knocking those threads in has made it uh, 
strip the threads a little bit. Yeah, he'll be all good. Now, before we do that, we better get the other one started. Let's get him started just a little bit. I thought it was going to be. What did I do with that other nut? Okay. Start it. This one I brought that other nut down here. I just noticed that the camera knocked down. <laughs> but anyway, we'll see if we can get some light. We got those two bolts and the two bolts on the other side. There's the uh, shim for the camera or a caster. And then there's the bump stop. We're all secured. So we're going to move to the other side. We got the passenger side or right side done now and if you look at that gap there between the bump stop now and the uh, frame it measures out to an inch and a half so the question is that I raise my entire front end an inch and a half and it's gonna make them 14 inch tires look shorter maybe we'll know here momentarily you can see where I've greased it really put the grease to this dude Got them greased up there. I got them two bolts up there. I could only get them in with the wheel out. So anyway, that's the passenger side. Oh my knees, I'm gonna pay for this in the, in the morning. And here's the driver's side. All right, and there's just barely clearance. Let me tell you, I mean clearance is really at a really barely there so anyway that's it put the wheels on let's see what we got all right boys and girls i'm soliciting opinions that has now got the full eight leaves in the front and that's how it stands it kind of almost looks almost perfectly level the front wheel, the front tire has at least two inches of gap between it and the fender well, and the rear doesn't. So that's one thing. Now I've measured 
the ground clearance at the front bumper and it is now at 11 and a half inches and that's still low compared to the Chevy here which comes in at 13 and three quarter inches so there's a uh, definitely three inches more but the main thing I was worried about was that 14 inch tire looking too small and I don't think it does but again just your all's opinion uh, I've got uh, an inch and a half now of clearance between the the bump stop and the frame and leaf so I'm happy about that and I'm going to do a little spring test now All right. all right well the shock single action shock seems to be doing all right and uh the leaves seem to be but we'll know more when we get it out on the highway so uh, anyway, I think we can stick a fork in that. Well, all right, I believe we're gonna stick a fork in that project. We went from two springs when I first got it to five where I was trying to get the best of both worlds in which actually I didn't. So now I've got the full eight springs. Now they're, uh, granted, they are wore out, so there's going to be some droop in it, which is good because I want to maintain a lower profile anyway with those 14-inch tires. So anyway, I'll know better once I get it out on the road. It should be an improvement in ride, and that's the main thing I'm looking for. I, uh, I like to drive them, uh, and if they don't drive worth the hoop, well, then I'm going to do something about it. But anyway, uh, that'll, that'll do it for this. If, uh, if you like this kind of stuff, where I work on these old trucks, uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and you can hit that bell and it'll give you a notification when the next video uh, is posted, which is generally on Fridays. So, thanks for watching. Hope you all have a good one, and we'll see you around.